everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It is now time for our second monthly subscription box. I was very entertained by all of the opinions and the interactions under the Upcrate video. It seems to be quite a controversial box. If you haven't seen that video I will link it in the end card and down in the description so that you can watch it after you're finished here. So Scholar Box is the sort of UK equivalent of the Upcrate and it's a monthly subscription they send you a box of goodies every month, they give you an art prompt, so you try and make an artwork out of the supplies that come in the box. We always get a little magazine that comes with it as well, and Scroller Box also send out a sticker, a suite of some description, and there is also a featured artist as well. So let's get cracked in and we shall see what we can see. Ooh. Okay, so here is our Scroller zine, and this looks uh, almost water colour-esque but that looks quite mm, yeah okay so here is our featured artist I love these square format cards they're so much nicer than the A5 and it's a flamingo with a baby that's so cute Camilla Gardner and she's from County Durham and that is some information about her on the back she does have Instagram and she's also got a website as well so you can check out her website for more of her stuff that is super nice it's really nice to see a painting or a drawing of a flamingo it's not something you see very often I like it. I like it. Oh, the baby tucked in there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So let's take a look at the, the art surface that we've got. It is watercolour paper and eight sheets of 300 GSM cold press. So this is an unbranded, it's a scroller box own brand paper. So let's have a wee feel. I'm sure we've had similar stuff to this before. Yeah, it seems like kind of standard fare. It's not terribly rough textured although it is uh, cold pressed paper it's not bad at all and obviously 300 gsm that's the kind of standard that you want excellent stuff <laughs> this makes me chuckle here is our scroller box sticker and that usually fits in with the front of the zine or the artwork somewhere and i like to try and piece it together i think this might be miniature version though our sweet is uh the swizzles great british puds and it is a sticky toffee pudding now interestingly i don't have much of a sweet tooth anyway one of the desserts that i absolutely cannot stomach is sticky toffee pudding and that is because many many years ago when i qualified as a chef um, I used to make 400 portions of sticky toffee pudding every single day and to this day, that was like 20 years ago, that recipe is like imprinted into my brain and the sickly sweet smell that you use. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. Mr. Jem will be having this. Uh, I'm sure it's very good though. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at some of these supplies. We've got a, a, a Derwent water brush. I don't know how many incarnations of water brushes I've seen from Derwent, but I seem to get a different one every time. So this has got like a mega barrel on it. Um, I don't know if it actually holds any more water or it's just that it's a, they've changed the shape. Um, and it's got these pushy buttons and that's to help you squirt the water through so you can regulate your water control. Uh, it looks fairly, fairly standard. How does this unscrew though? Okay. So yeah, that, that might be a little bit easier to fill. I tend to fill mine uh, with a pipette because I'm a sciencey person and I have lots of pipettes. Uh, even for under a tap though, that might actually be, be a little bit easier. So I'm curious to try these out because I'm very fussy about water brushes. Uh, most of you know I stick with the Kuretake Zig and I've actually just bought my, myself a new set. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite curious to try that one out. We've got two pencils here. West Design China Graph pencils. We've had one of these recently as well. I think it might have been an upgrade. A China Graph pencil is made for writing on like plastic film or plastic tubs and glass and things like that. The, they generally work quite well and the advantage of them is that they're waterproof. We use them outside on the farm quite often for, for various things. The problem with them is they do tend to be quite crumbly and it's difficult to, to sharpen them. They're, the cores seem to be very fragile on them, uh, a bit like Prismacolors. Well, I would say worse than Prismacolors. Uh, so that's just something to note. I'm, I'm looking at these ones and these do have quite thick cores, but there's not much wood uh, protecting that so if you drop them and bounce them about and these are, mine were tucked in you know they were actually um, all together inside the tissue but if these have been rattled about the chances are that they're probably not going to sharpen very well I will reserve judgment though but that's just my experience of uh, China Graph pencils previously and I used to use the Statler Lumograph ones so 
you know. Right, the thing that was making me laugh is what we've got here is tubes of Dale Rowney Aquafine watercolour. Uh, I have some of these in the stash shop already and there's actually not very many left. Uh, so once we're finished our artwork, I shall uh, add these to the collection and that'll just top up that product listing again. So if you would like these uh, paints, I, I will put these in the stash shop once we're finished with them. We've got a lovely selection of colours here. Now this is... The, the the only thing that's wrong with this, and I think it's fairly obvious if you've ever used watercolour before, is don't bother giving us white. We don't want white. Unless you're going for like a, a sort of foggy or misty or milky appearance, this is practically no use. Uh, some people like that kind of thing. And I tend to find that I, the only time I use white if I'm watercolouring is if it's an illustration rather than a, you know, a more realistic artwork. So that was a waste. I would much rather have had a black or a dark brown. So I'm kind of annoyed about that because other than that, we've got a good uh, we've got a good selection of colours here. Obviously, we've got our primaries, so that's good for being able to mix. But in addition to that, they've given us a really nice deep green. The Hooker's Green Dark's a lovely colour. And also, raw sienna is just a, a really good colour to have if you are going to do anything that's even remotely nature or real life type stuff. All in all, that set, that's fairly good. I like these watercolour paints and that's why I sell them in the stash shop. They're really good value and they're nice quality for the for what you pay for them. So I, I'm quite looking forward to that. So we've got our list of supplies here. Let's see if we can learn anything else about them. Uh, this month's box is all about working with layers to create palpable textures. Experiment with building up different intensities with water to paint ratio. How do they lay on top of each other? How does the flat or matte finish from mixing in the white look? Use the china graph to form subtle patterns, markings, shading and highlights. Layer up and see where it takes you. Try these things out to see how they work in creating your tactile textures. Well, I wouldn't say tactile textures was a phrase that I would associate with watercolour. That's a phrase I would associate with oil and acrylic paint, but never mind. The Aquafine paints tells you a bit about about them. They're an English company. High quality pigments, milled to perfection. Uh, watercolours are richly pigmented, free-flowing colours with fantastic light fast properties. The transparent colours have excellent tinting strength and working properties that reliably produce beautiful delicate washes every time you use them. Just out of curiosity here, they've got the recommended retail price down as £2.60 each. Um, we're selling them a wee bit cheaper than that in the shop. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the Derwent Push Button Water Brush M. I'm assuming M stands for medium as in referring to the, the brush tip, not the actual size of the barrel. I might be wrong. Let's see. This convenient refillable water brush is perfect for painting on the go wherever and whenever creativity hits. This brush features a large water barrel and has a push button for easy to control water release. The bristles are made from durable nylon fibres which hold shape and point for continuous and regular use. To fill it, just unscrew the two halves of the barrel and pour in a little water. Right, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. I'm, I'm not convinced until I try these things, I'm really not. The Royal Sovereign China... Royal Sovereign? West Design. The these versatile pencils. Now that's interesting. I wonder if these brand have changed names because uh, I'm, I'm squinting at the writing on the, the picture of the pencils here and it does say Royal Sovereign on the pencils, but mine say West Design. They might be the same company, it's not a name I'm familiar with, uh, so we will we'll have to do a little bit of digging about with that as well, we'll do a bit of investigating. Uh, these versatile pencils will work on virtually any surface, including china, plastics, acetate, film, brick, wood and glass. It's supposed to say by combining, it says by combing specially selected pigments and waxes. They're resistant to water, but you can remove them from non-porous surfaces with a dry cloth or tissue. That's not that easily done. We used to take it off with acetone, you know, like nail polish remover. Making them for an interesting pairing with watercolour paints. So they'll basically act as a resist against the watercolour paints. These are extremely accessible and easy to use and can even be sharpened with a normal pencil sharpener. Again, me and we'll see. The watercolour pad, uh, custom made for our scrawlers, is excellent paired with any water-based medium, eight sheets of quality paper. Okay, and our scrawler challenge is birds of a feather. So that fits in beautifully with our featured artist. Uh, I'm, I'm quite fond of drawing birdies. <laughs> I quite like drawing birdies. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this. So the last thing we're going to look at before we test out our supplies is the scroller zine. Now this month I will be doing the scroller challenge in a separate video. I alternate between 
this and upgrade and alternate between doing the challenge and with the unboxing and not and it's purely for a little bit of um, enjoyment for me because I sometimes feel quite harassed when I jump straight into it so if you want to look out for the scroller challenge video it will be within the next week or so. So here's our sort of overview page and they've squished out all the paints and everything looks lovely. I'd have been so much happier with a lemon meringue pud. <laughs> Sticky toffee one. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, see, in the book here, the, the picture says Royal Sovereign and mine say West Design. So, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. It's just one of those little things that you notice, you know? White water can be used on its own to add small highlights. <laughs> nah, that's what gouache is for. But adding, adding it to other colours will not lighten them, but will create a milky atmospheric effect. Now, that's lovely, but I, I don't know how much I'm actually going to use it, especially if we're doing birds. I sit down with our April featured artist. This is Camilla Gardner. That's it. Uh, that's lovely. It's She's done that in pencil though. I don't think she's... That doesn't look as if it's been done in, in watercolour. She does doggy portraits. That's awesome. I like doing doggy portraits. But that's really, really nice. I like that. Okay, so a little bit of a chit chat with her. Find out some things about her. We've got scroller tips here. There is a specific section on using the whites, which is the China Graph pencil on the white watercolour. I don't know, they really seem to be pushing the white. I think it's probably because most people would react the way I just have if you are, you know, if you've had any experience of watercolour. So maybe they're trying to say, look, white's not so bad. Either that are just trying to make an excuse, I don't know. Uh, the China Graph pencil uses a highlighter, the wax texture is water resistant. So perfect for going back over the top of your watercolour once it's dry. Or alternatively, you could put it down first and then when you paint over the top of it, it's going to act as a resist. No? Hmm? You know, like a, like a masking fluid. That would make more sense to me than going back over the top. But we can try it both ways. Uh, yeah, the white watercolour. Keep your white separate. Use a separate palette. I think that's just common sense personally, but what do I know? Uh, to lighten your watercolours, just add more water. When you mix white with the other colours, you actually kill the transparency of them. Well, that's the point, and that's why nobody uses white watercolour, because it goes milky, it goes cloudy. And the whole... Well, the main reason that I like watercolour is because it is transparent. So we're, we're, we're dealing with a different beast here this time. If you do want a more opaque look to your watercolour, add the white. It will give a chalky finish to the colour. Whitewash your background for a flat, smooth matte finish. Now that's a good use of white. I like that idea. These are um, all about watercolour. Apart from the last one, which talks about the China Graph pencils. It's basically just saying what it said over here, just with a little bit more detail. Here is the scroller gallery from the February box. And this, this was the abstract. <laughs> the abstract box. I really, really struggled with this one. <laughs> and these are amazing. Like these are these are all so 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 cool. Uh, this was this was absolutely not my but I had great fun with it, and I do believe I was taking rather a lot of painkillers when I did the scroller challenge for this. But I it, I enjoy looking at other people's art from this because it really wasn't my thing at all. So well done to everybody here because they really are. They're super, super cool. Avian art. So we're talking about, this is like a little bit of your uh, your art history lesson here. Uh, the subject of inspiration for artists throughout history. So there's a nice bit there you can read on that. Scroller update. Uh, sticker packs. We're often asked if the scroller stickers from previous boxes are available to purchase. And yes, they are. We, created, we have created packs of the 2019 and 2020 stickers so if you missed a month or two you can still get those missing stickers to complete your collection we've also introduced a brand new sticker pack s1 which includes stickers never before released oh goodness me no thanks i've got enough scroller box stickers that i haven't done anything with i don't think i need any more the blackwing pencil collaboration continues they're talking about the pencil that came in the january box another announcement that these boxes are now available in boxes of 12 from our store so I, I, I thought this would happen and I think I did say it at the time that they might make these available. I would be interested to see how much these are because the Blackwing pencils are quite expensive anyway. But Blackwing themselves do limited edition sets and uh, the, the, the rarer ones now are really, really pricey. Like you pay a lot of money for them. So I'm quite curious to see how much these are going to be. If they're reasonable, I'll buy a box because I quite like the Blackwing pencils and those ones are pretty. <laughs> So that is everything in our scroller box. So let's jump over and test out some of these supplies. Let's let's have a wee go and see how we get on. Righty ho ho, so I've got all my accoutrements. One of the things that strikes me as slightly odd about all this is I find it really weird using a water brush with tube watercolour. I just prefer to use a paintbrush. But aside from that, I'm pretty happy with the contents of this box so far. I was first introduced to Dale Rowney Aquafine paints through scroller box and they gave us like a little travel paint pan set. I've still got my 
fine. And once again, I've got one up for sale in the stash shop if anybody would like this in a, in a more compact form. I'm just, just getting all the plugs in there today. So anyway, we'll get started and test these supplies out and see what is what and have a wee do with this paper, see what it's all about too. So in order to fill with the water brush, just bit of just on screws and I've got my bit here and as you can see that fits really nicely inside there and I can just squish some water right on in there. Let's fill it up, why not? Okay so I do I do have a jug of water here as well because I might want to dilute my paints in the palette and to do that I'm not going to use my water brush so this is what I mean about it being a bit kind of like more counterproductive but that's okay. I appreciate that they're giving us a fancy water brush to try out so. So I've got a couple of palettes here, I've got one for mixing and one that I can just splodge colours into just for fun, it means I can keep my white separate as well. First things first, let's try and sharpen these graph pencil so I'm going to use the Tagal sharpener for this. This is the multi sharpener that can give you a wee short stubby point up to a long pointy pointy point and because I know what China graph pencils are like I'm going to try and get a short stubby point just to see how it sharpens. So these are completely unsharpened brand new. Now this seems to be turning really well in here which is a good sign. Okay we've got a point. Uh, yeah oh okay yep I'm, I'm really happy with that so far. Let's see if the black's just as good. Okay, off to an excellent start. They're pretty good points on those and uh, I've had a wee press at them as well and the tips don't seem to be crumbling off the black's actually drawn on my hand. <laughs> so yeah, that's a really good sign and I'm, I'm pleased about that because these China Graph pencils, as I said before, they can be a bit of a hit or a miss. So let's try them out on the paper. That's quite smooth. That's quite soft. We will try these over the top of the, of the paint as well. And just for a little resist test, I'm gonna use the white here. So I'm just gonna put a block down and again, no issues. A little bit of crumbling, but that again, that's kind of to be expected. It's just kind of like the genetic makeup of these types of pencils, you know, like the recipe. So we'll splodge out our colours. I'll make this palette look pretty. Now, a little of this goes a really, really long way. Hooker's Green was keen to come out there. <laughs> I've never really been a fan of using watercolour out the tube. I don't know why, I just seem to get on better with them in pan form. I think, I feel like I've got more control over it in terms of dilution and things. I think that's really, because I find with tubes I always tend to end up like putting out more than I actually need. So we need to get this water brush started so we'll give the barrel a, a bit of a squeeze. Oh, there we go. I always go in the back of my hand because I can feel how damp it is. Does that make sense? That feels quite good so far. So let's start with the colours we can see. So lift a bit of the raw sienna. That It just feels really awkward with a water brush. I just like a normal paintbrush for stuff like this. Because even if I add more in, it's still adding more water to it. You know, whereas with a paintbrush, you can dry it off and you can just add it into the water without adding more water while you're adding to it. Oh my God. That made sense in my head. Uh, this, this is the sienna brown but the, the paint itself travels really well it reactivates really well and the colors are nice and vibrant i i actually really like these paints i've actually got my uh, my paint puck and it's just a tiny bit of water here and it's good just to rub the end of your nib on or alternatively you can have a rag that's another favorite of mine just to sort of on <laughs> Okay, Hooker's Green, this, I love this colour, it's yum yum yum. So vibrant, really nice. Just makes me want to paint trees. Okay, we've got the Ultramarine Blue Dark. Ooh, that's pretty. I love the way this paint travels in the water, like I love the mobility of it. That's one of the things, that one of the reasons I actually really liked this paint the first time round. And we've got a yellow, this is le lemon yellow? Yeah, lemon yellow. It looks like cad yellow in the in the palette. Lovely, jubbly. And we've got the alizarin crimson. And we're off. Look at that for vibrancy. I mean, that that's really, really good. Really nice. Let's try something with the white, because we, we do want to test the white out. So I'll do it with the alizarin crimson because that's a colour that stands out. So I'm just uh, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this white and I'll stick it in one of these little mixing pans up here. And oh, that's turned my water cloudy. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> and I'll grab a little bit of the alizarin. Again, it's kind of difficult to mix because every time you put your brush in, you're adding, you know, you're adding more water to it. So you're actually diluting it out, which again is just one of the reasons I don't really favour a water brush for using water colours like this. Grab a little bit more white. That just doesn't appeal to me at all. There we go. So it has given me a pinkier hue, but it, see, it's got this kind of weird sort of cloudy consistency to it. And I, I just find it a bit odd in watercolour, to be honest. It's probably because I don't use it. And I'm sure there are people out there who use something like that to their advantage, but it's just not something I've really played about with. There's something in this paint that's not white. 
I don't know whether it's... I don't know what it is. Ugh. Okay, let's try it with the blue as well. This blue is really strong, so I only need a tiny little bit of that. So there you go, that's giving you a more sort of traditional... That's something like a cornflower blue, actually. Mm. So you can see the difference with it when it's got white in it versus versus the actual straight colour. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll probably be able to see a bit better. But you can see it's got this kind of like milky texture to it, which is, uh, yeah. Now, in terms of mixing properties as well, uh, you know, if you're going to do things in a more sort of regular fashion, let's grab some yellow, plonk that in there. Okay, so far with the water brush, I have to say that I'm not having any consistency issues with water flow, which is real nice. There we go, there's a nice deep orange. Oh, oh yeah. And even when I'm moving quickly here, the water flow is keeping up. You know, this isn't drying out as I'm going. I can go forever with this, jeez. There we go. <laughs> I'm all the way down here. <laughs> <laughs> and the paint is sitting really nicely on the paper, particularly in the more diluted forms. It's sitting beautifully on the paper. So the paper is excellent as well. This is a great box. I'm excited. Right, we want to try now and see what happens when we go over our China Graph pencil. So if you remember, I've got this little white patch here. Uh, let's just grab... Let's grab some Hooker's Green because it's quite a dark colour. And see what happens. Hello? Yeah! Oh, hi. <laughs> so obviously the, the paint has beaded up on top of the on top of the white part because it's got nowhere to go. So it's just kind of sticking to itself. And uh, you can remove that quite easily. Uh, you can use the thirsty brush technique, which is what I'd do if I had a normal paintbrush. Or you can get a bit of tissue. Uh, you can lift it. So that's actually smearing a little bit. Okay, so my previous thought on using it that like in the masking type thing is going to be quite messy. So once this is dry, we'll test the pencils on the top and see what happens. Basically, yeah, everything's wonderful in this box. We, can, mm, we could try over the black. Let's use the yellow. Oh... Well, obviously, because our paint is transparent, you're going to see that anyway. But going over the top of the black is actually smudging the black a little bit. And it's kind of dirtied the end of my, my water brush here. So I maybe wouldn't be so keen on doing it that way around after all. But there you go. I've learned something today, which is nice. It's always good, especially if you get supplies that you're already familiar with. If you, if you can glean something else from, you know, a box like this, then it's always a good thing. And as I like to say, every day's school day. So I'll just give this a little minute to dry and then we can test out these uh, pencils on the top. Okay, my raw sienna's pretty dry now. Because we're let's we're talking about highlights. That was one of the things they mentioned. But all this is pretty dry, actually. It's not great. Okay, so the, the pencil does go down on top of the colours and obviously it stands out a bit better on the darker colours, but it's not wonderful for highlights. Now they said about using the white as well, and in my experience, if I'm going to put really crisp highlights in something, it doesn't really matter what medium I've done the, the actual piece in, I tend to use white gouache, it's the best thing that stands out. Sometimes I use a Posca pen just for ease, but depending on what you've used underneath, for example, if you use wax pencil, the Posca paint like sucks the pigment up and you end up with a discolourment and you have to go over it again whereas you don't get that as much with gouache so it'll be interesting to see because watercolour paint is supposed to be transparent uh, so really would you want to be using white for a highlight? Let's find out together uh, same thing yeah, really, you'd have to build that up. And obviously, if you're using the water brush, what I was saying earlier, when, every time you stroke that brush, you are, you're expending more water, therefore you're diluting down what you're doing. It wouldn't be the best idea in my book. It, it kind of works, like it does work, but it's not, not for crisp highlights, for subtle highlights maybe. Um, but I was thinking more, you know, if you want to put a reflection in your feathered friend's eye, you want that to be a really stark, like contrasting white to the, the eyeball and this just wouldn't cut it for me. Uh, now the pencil on top of the dark pencil, this is going to be good for adding maybe a little bit of shading. You know, you can like, because you can make that quite dark down the bottom. And that's going over the watercolour paint perfectly. And also if you're more of a, an outliner, you know, you'd be able to use this for, for getting in, you know, to make it kind of pop out or if you just like an outline around things. One thing I will say is that you will have to keep sharpening this because they are soft core. Uh, you know, the point wears down pretty quickly, so you need to keep your sharpener handy too. But other than that, these supplies go really, really well together. I would still have preferred 
a traditional paintbrush to a water brush. That is just a preference of mine though. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this water brush. As always though, I always say with these types of things, it's all very well swatching things out, but the proof is always in the pudding. So when we come to the next video and actually start our artwork, we'll see how it holds up. The other thing I wanted to see as well is how well or not so well these paints reactivate, you know, for lifting purposes or maneuverability purposes. So I'll just take the bottom of this green here and you can see me scrubbing away at that and that is lifting the paint off. So again, using a thirsty brush technique, you would use a, a slightly damp, clean brush and you would press into the paper and it would actually almost like suck up the paint. And you can see there that's starting to come up. Try it in the middle of the blue here. We wet it and then start. You can see there on that right hand side, again, it was zoom in slightly, um, that you can see that it's lifted no problem at all. So if you want to lighten up areas or you've made a mistake, like me, because I do that a lot with watercolour, it's easily fixable. But also if you just want to manipulate the paint a little bit and you maybe change your mind, you've got the option to do that and you can still reactivate it and soften out edges and dilute it a little bit more. There you are, look, and that paint's just travelling with me. It's just coming with me. It's not a problem at all. So absolutely excellent. Nice high quality supplies. And this is this is lovely after the upgrade incident. It, it, this is so refreshing and it's nice to have a, a, a well curated set of supplies. So all in all, a very lovely box indeed. Nice prompt to work with as well, nothing too awkward, uh, something that's in my wheelhouse as well, which obviously pleases me slightly. I am very much looking forward to the scroller challenge. I would love to hear your thoughts on this box, how you think these supplies go together, and if you have any plans for doing the scroller challenge yourself. So that's it for today, guys. I want to thank you very much for watching. Please look after each other, stay safe, and I'll see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Have a good day, everyone, and bye for now.